Wonderful. Okay, so we've got a short reflection. Now, my favourite verse and also my first passage I ever preached is this. In Philippians 2, 14 to 15, it says, Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. And if we move to slide one, John. Got slide one. That just, uh, just explains that verse. And I want to say to you, if you want to shine like stars, you must remain humble and learn not to grumble. Okay, so we move to the next slide. Okay, so be humble, don't grumble. And if you actually put that into practice, it really does work. And if you become someone that's very critical, someone that moans, actually, in the end, it can affect everything. So it's much better to learn not to grumble and to remain humble. And why do we do that? Because that's how Jesus lived. The second part of that verse is we are to be holy and different from a warped and crooked generation. And we're to do so by living in relationship with Jesus, who is spirit and truth. What, does anyone know what the hottest, biggest, brightest star is in the universe? Can anyone tell us? It's the sun. And we're to shine as hot and as bright as the sun. Do you know the sun was created, it was designed, and it was placed in the universe by Jesus. And when you think about how hot the sun is, Jesus must have asbestos hands, mustn't he? Do you know what I'm saying? To place that sun in the universe there, and the sun is so hot, it melts everything. And when you think deeply about how awesome the placement of the sun is in the universe, I think it blows your mind quite literally to think about that. If there is a creator, then there is a designer. If there is a designer, then there is intent. If there is intent, then there is morality. If there is morality, then surely there is some sense of accountability to God, the Creator. It's a philosoph philosophical way of looking at it, but if you pack it right back to the beginning, actually we do need to be careful how we live. And I ask you this question, how are we shining in morality uh, for Jesus? recognizing each one of us is accountable to God. Uh, Chaz reminded us last week that God is all-seeing. We can't hide anything from God. Historians have studied the general distinctive nature of the church through the years. One particular historian is Dr. Larry Herdadu. I, I'm sure that's an American name, um, but I can't say it probably as an American. But um, he studied the church, and he said at points in history when the church has shone in this particular way, it has really stood against the warped and crooked generation that it's living in. So this isn't saying the church has always done it. It is saying when it has done it, it has stood out from the warped and crooked generation. So first of all, the church has been multiracial, multi-ethnic, with a high value for diversity, equity and inclusion. When the church has done that historically, it has absolutely shone out for Jesus. And the church has done that. When the church has spread across social economic lines, as well as placing a high value for caring for the poor, as well as that, those that were in a rich place have learnt to share their wealth with the community, that is when the church has really shined. 
In other words, when the church lives for the poor, it really shines. Also, the church has shown resistance to abortion or treating infants in a particular terrible way. When the church has stood up for the young and the vulnerable, then it has shined, I think, more brightly. These, get, these are ethical questions that the church has answered throughout history in various ways. I also think the history... In history, the church has stood for marriage and sexual purity. And when it has lived out that, I believe it has shone in a warped and crooked generation. It stood for real family, what it means to be family. That is what it means to be pure and stand out in a warped and crooked generation that sometimes has found family life very difficult. Also, this is the final one, and this is probably, in so many ways, the one that grieves me most when I study church history. The church has really shone out when it has done non-violent behaviour on a personal level or political level. In other words, when it has been a real peacemaker. The church has really shone out then when it's learned what it means to stand against violence and to protest against violence and not bring up arms. So through the generations, the church's purity has shone out from within the warped and crooked nature of the world. Today, the church is still shining and it needs to. And final, my final point is the church needs to shine with ethics, morality, based on the purity of God's values. This is what the world says. This is what the warped, crooked generations say. Lust is redefined as love. I believe God says to us, live with sexual purity. Marriage is no longer a lifelong commitment, but a contract of personal fulfilment. Oh, church, please hold marriage sacred. The objectification of men and women sexually is, female, or is male or female empowerment. Oh, no, it isn't, world. We live differently from the lives of the world. Greed as responsibility to shareholders is another lie. We are to share our wealth across the world. The gross injustice to factory workers in the developing world is just part of capitalist globalism. Oh, come on, church. We need to support fair trade in all ways that we can. I come to the end. The final slide is we need to shine like stars with ethical, moral and pure behaviour in the church because then we will be like Jesus. Wonderful. Okay. That is my talk over. <laughs>